venerable religious and dear parishioners, I learned a historical fact within the last two or three days. Something that happened on this day a long time ago. And we all know that every day of history you could find something very powerful, very significant that happened um, on that particular day, whether, you know, 200 years ago or 500 years ago or 1,500 years ago. But anyway, this is what I want to tell you about this day. It happened in the year 314. Excuse me, 312. It was off by two years. 312. What happened on October 27th in the year 314? Well, actually, on th October 28th, there was a tremendous battle between the army of Emperor, of, he wasn't emperor yet, of Constantine and of Maxentius. Both were pagans, and they were fighting for supremacy over Rome. The battle was at the Milvian Bridge, October 28th. Constantine was the better pagan, if we want to call it that, or better in the sense that he was closer to conversion than Maxentius. And his mother, St. Helena, a canonized saint, was the one that would discover the cross, in the relic of the cross in Jerusalem, and would build up many churches. But what happened on October 27th, the day before, as the two armies were massing in battle on opposite sides of the Tiber River? Constantine's troops on the south because at that part of the river Tiber, it flows east-west. Generally, it's in a general course, the Tiber goes from a northwest to a southwest direction, but as we know, every river has its bends. And, and, so, and this particular section is east-west. So the forces of Maxentius on the north, Constantine on the south. What happened? On October 27th, Constantine saw an amazing vision in the sky. The cross appeared in the sky. Apparently, only he saw it. The cross was there, and the letters appeared in hoc signo. Vinces, in this sign, you will conquer. I'm sure as every military leader does, he had his misgivings whether he would win that battle. It seemed quite possible that Maxentius' forces were more powerful, so that he had that anxiety. How can we defeat our enemy? But God was literally inserting himself into history, intervening. And he told this man, who would later on be baptized, by the way, become a Catholic, he gave him this miraculous event, in this sign you will conquer. And so Constantine had his army start to put the cross on their banners, you probably didn't fully realize what this was all about, but this was a miraculous event. And in fact, he defeated Maxentius the next day at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. And the lesson for us is most powerful and will be for all people for all time the cross is the sign of the king. That day marked the beginning of the downfall of paganism. 
yes, of pagan Rome that had martyred and killed so many Christians, millions of them. St. Alphonsus Liguri estimates anywhere from 8 to 11 million martyrs for the faith. So now Christianity, well, the following year, he legalized Christianity. No longer could anybody be persecuted for being a Catholic, for being a Christian. Now churches could be built in public places. He himself saw to the building of many Catholic churches, the building of St. John Lateran, for example. So again, it was the beginning of the downfall of paganism. This is something you should be aware of, but I'm sorry to say that a pagan symbol was exalted these past three weeks of the that of the Amazon Synod in Rome. It's the downfall, it's the continued descent into apostasy. Those of you that have been following the news know that a pagan idol, and I, I, I refrain from even describing the statue because it's so grossly immodest, the Pachamama idol was brought from the Amazon, and we have video of a worship service being given to the sign of the devil. Right on the Vatican grounds with the false pope sitting there and who had the blasphemous effrontery to even bless the idol when it was brought to him. And throughout the Amazon Synod, this idol, is actually there were copies of it, it's more than one, they were put in prominent places. And then two Catholic men, like with the courage of the martyrs, they went into the one church where it was being desecrated with these idols and threw them into the Tiber River. I wonder if they threw it in right at the Milvian Bridge. And then they were rescued from the Tiber and the false pope of Vatican II apologized for the, for the hurt that was given by his idols being thrown in. By the way, the Amazon, uh, the Amazon Synod voted in to have now a married clergy, women deacons. You need to know this, my dear friends. The apostasy continues. It keeps sinking further and further. What should have been exalted is the cross. The sign of the king. But he was pushed out of the way for idols. What an offense. And the very what's supposed to be the very headquarters of our Holy Catholic faith. He was betrayed, he was slapped again. Instead of the cross being carried, statues of Christ the King, statues of Mary Immaculate, this idol was even carried into churches by bishops and cardinals, so-called bishops and cardinals. These are not Catholics. They can't possibly be. So let us offer our reparation to our Lord today, to the sacred heart of Jesus, wounded again by the sins of mankind, wounded by those who should be most faithful to him. He is to be adored. His holy mother is to be venerated. And we stand with them. We kneel before them. There are people that are starting to wake up. I know it's taken a long time, but I believe we're going to see more and more people that for them this is the final straw. How can this possibly be the Catholic Church? And we should welcome them with open arms. We should, we, there shouldn't be nothing like saying, well, it sure took a long time. Or No, 
Forget that. We are just glad to see those that say, yes, I want to be Catholic. I don't want to be part of that false religion. Let us be most welcoming. Let us give them the example of a fervent Catholic life. Help them to live their Catholic faith. But let us always remember the cross is the sign of the king. We know what it means. It means suffering. But our Lord himself walked that path to a degree that nobody else ever could. He allowed himself to be defeated so that the victory would come. And there, there's the paradox of Christianity, and it, I think we should not tire of saying this. It's a paradox. It looks like a contradiction, but it's not. The devil thought he had defeated our Lord by having him crucified by his enemies. But in that act of obedience, it was the triumph of good over evil. The sin of Adam was overcome. There's another very beautiful, powerful thought from Chesterton. He says, do you know why the cross cannot be defeated? Because it is defeat. It's the symbol of defeat, but at the same time, it's the symbol of an even greater victory. St. Paul says in today's epistle, he, he would reconcile to himself all things, whether on the earth or in the heavens, making peace through the blood of his cross. So let us... On this Feast of Christ the King, remember these, of course, our Catholic faith, its wonderful doctrines and teachings, but the lessons of history on this day in 314. Again, in this sign, you will conquer. His mother, St. Helena, as I said, she, she made it a point to find the relics of the true cross along with the, the two crosses of the two, of the two thieves that were crucified with our Lord. They were found, and those relics of the cross have been distributed throughout Christianity. And as a matter of fact, here's a miracle. There's more wood now. It's like the, you, know, you know how our Lord miraculously multiplied the loaves and fishes? Well, even the wood of the cross has multiplied and increased over the centuries. God can do that. There's more wood there than there was in the original wood of the cross. We're privileged to have a, a relic of the true cross here, and it's always edifying to me when three times a year or so I present the the cross, the relic of the cross to you, and the and the love and devotion that I see is is just heartwarming to see your, your appreciation of that most sacred relic we have of our Lord. I'm edified time and again when I give extreme unction, and the first thing that's done after the sprinkling of the holy water is to present the cross, the crucifix, to be kissed by the one about to get extreme unction. And Again, I can see that love and devotion. Yes, let me kiss the cross. Let me, let me show my love. Let me show my appreciation for my Lord and Savior. So that is the cross, the sign of the king. It will be in the heavens when he comes to judge. Let us honor, love, and appreciate the cross so that we may triumph with Christ forever in heaven. We have the queen here beautifully still enshrined in her Fatima, uh, uh, Fatima shrine. And remember what she's doing. She is working harder than all of us for the reign of her son. When her immaculate heart triumphs, that means that his sacred heart will triumph. So Christus vivit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. Christ lives, Christ rules, Christ conquers.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.